Welcome to Tuesday of the week after the Feast of the Epiphany. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. And a short one, but very beautiful first reading today. So pay attention to that one today because I think it's something that we could ponder in a little deeper way. So let's begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Jesus has manifested himself to us. Let's ask him now for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come to us this morning in word. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory to bring salvation to your people. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, God, oh, let me just simply say, today's the Feast of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. And as a Mount St. Mary's grad, I know her pretty well. And uh, she married uh, um, uh, uh, William Seton. Uh, her husband died after uh, the birth of six children. She becomes a Catholic, disowned by his family. And then she goes down to Emmitsburg to start the first Catholic school in the United States in the Daughters of Charity. 
And uh, so I spent much time at the mother house of Elizabeth Ann Seton. She was also great friends with the founders of uh, Mount St. Mary's, uh, Father Brute and Dubois, both of them uh, French uh, Sulpicians. And they were all friends together, a beautiful relationship together with all of them. And uh, so we pray through the intercession of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton as uh, uh, the one who had the first Catholic school in the United States. And let's pray. O God, who crowned with the gift of true faith, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton's burning zeal for you, grant by her intercession example that we may always seek you with a diligent love and find you in daily service with sincere faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let no one deceive you. The person who acts in righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. Whoever sins belongs to the devil, because the devil has sinned from the beginning. Indeed, the Son of God was revealed to destroy the works of the devil. No one who is begotten by God commits sin, because God's seed remains in him. He cannot sin because he is begotten by God. In this way, the children of God and the children of the devil are made plain. No one who fails to act in righteousness belongs to God, nor anyone who does not love his brother. The word of the Lord. Justice shall flourish in its time and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flourish in its time and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flourish in its time, and fullness of peace forever. The mountains shall yield peace for the people, and the hills justice. He shall defend the afflicted among the people, and save the children of the poor. Justice shall flourish in its time, and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace, till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Justice shall flourish in its time, and fullness of peace forever. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. By now it was already late, and the disciples approached and said to him, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss them so they can go to the surrounding farms and villages and buy themselves something to eat. And he said to them in reply, Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Are we to buy 200 days' wages worth of food and give it to them to eat? He answered them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. 
When they found out, they said, five loaves and two fish. So ordered, he gave orders to have them sit down in groups on the grass. People took their places in rows of hundreds and of fifties. Then taking the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them to all. They all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up 12 wicker baskets full of fragments and what was left over of the fish. Those who ate of the loaves were 5,000 men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Someone said to me recently that whenever they say 5,000 men, you can count on 20,000 people, which I think is what we would say today, 20,000 people. So remarkable. So, uh, beautiful first reading today. And uh, indeed, God is love. What else is there to say? But having said that, let me take issue with something here today. My issue is not with the first reading or, any, or, or that phrase, that beautiful phrase, God is love. No truer statement has ever been made uh, in all of creation. But my issue is with the word love. Because in our postmodern, in our post-truth era that we live in today, the word love has been distorted in so many ways that almost we no long almost we we almost no longer understand its real meaning. Oftentimes, the meaning we get, given uh, um, uh, the media, is uh, from Hallmark or from Valentine's Day or whatever we chose choose to make the word love mean in our post-truth era. But the understanding of of love by the Bible is not something that we understand very well. And so oftentimes you'll notice that I don't use that word all the time. I use other words to try to talk about the same thing with all of you at Mass or here. And I'll say things like, you are accepted, you are welcomed, you belong. Every once in a while, I'll throw in, whenever I say some of those words, you are also loved but only try to capture that love in Jesus Christ means all those things as well. And maybe I think the important thing we need to say here today, not so much that you are loved, that you are accepted, that you are welcomed, but that many people don't feel welcomed. They don't feel loved. They don't feel accepted in their lives. And, and so therefore, we run around looking for love in all the wrong places in our lives. There was a story some years ago that was captured by the news. Uh, and it's a story about this young man who's swinging from a rope from a cross on the top of a church in Harvard Square in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And for 90 minutes, I, I think in the middle of a storm, he's sort of like swinging back and forth on this rope, trying to get people's attention. And hundreds of people are watching this person swinging back and forth, you know, doing all this. And finally, his brother goes up on a ledge and, and talks him down and talks him in uh, to the building and to safety once again. And when all this is over, he kind of mumbles that no one really cared for him, accepted him, or loved him. People don't feel loved. They don't feel like they belong. And they don't feel accepted and welcomed. Conrad Bars. Here's a book, an author that I read uh, uh, quite a bit, and um, he's a psychiatrist from years ago, and um, listened to a bunch of his tapes as well from years ago, too. And a book he wrote, a very simple one to read, but very profound book, is called Born Only Once. Like just simply born, you know, of your mothers whenever we come out of the womb. And I'd like to share with you real briefly his dedication of this little book, this very profound and beautiful little book. He writes, This book is dedicated to each person who feels insignificant and worthless like a child, at the mercy of grown-ups, afraid to assert himself, afraid of the world, who feels depressed, who wishes he were dead, who always feels tired, and whose pains and aches or psychosomatic illness do not respond adequately to treatment. This book is dedicated to the millions of people who never find true happiness and joy, nor 
I, I, and in spite of, let me read that all over again. I, I, I have, I've crossed out something here. I don't understand what I was going to say. Let me just, I'm going to read that again. Let me look at this over. Okay, let me do it again. This book is dedicated to each person who feels insignificant and worthless like a child, at the mercy of grown-ups, afraid to assert himself, afraid of the world, who feels depressed, who always feels tired, and whose aches and pains or psychosomatic illnesses do not respond adequately to treatment. This book is dedicated to the millions of people who never find true happiness and joy, even though they're not mentally ill. And in spite of a successful career, riches, fame, power over others, a life of doing for others, or of abandonment to sensuality and sexuality, this book is dedicated to the millions who have been deprived of their second birth, their psychic birth, by a significant affirming other, parents, relatives, teachers, or friends, and therefore, because of circumstances beyond their control, have been deprived of the joy of being affirmed, of knowing deep inside that they are loved. And all the stuff in the world, he says, in that dedication, will not help you be accepted, loved, and affirmed. And it is the point of our church, it's the point of all of us. I, I think if, you, if I could say a mission for all of us in our world today is to go out and just simply affirm people, just in very, very ordinary ways. Just to affirm. And I know you do that. All of you do that in the gospel today. That's what Jesus is doing. He's teaching them. He's trying to affirm them, help them to know that God loves them. He feeds them in a most profound way so that they can somehow know that they are loved and they are accepted and they are welcomed. So indeed, God is love. And let's make sure we understand exactly what that means. God is not this demanding, uh, cruel person who is keeping score up there. There's no God. There's, there's no man upstairs. There's a God who is present here, who has come to dwell among us. That's what we celebrate this season, that God has manifested himself here among us to help us to know we are accepted, we are welcomed, we belong, and yes, indeed, we are loved because God is indeed love. Here's my question for today. Do you believe that you are accepted, welcomed, loved by God? God bless you, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow.